Hey, what's up everyone? It's Darkbull Algo, and thanks for joining me on this afternoon watch list building session. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, and what a crazy day. It was meme stock day today. Gamma Squeeze is all over the place, AMC ran bananas, um, Bed Bath & Beyond went bananas, GameStop went bananas, every short squeeze went bananas. It was pretty awesome. However, that is gambling in my opinion uh, you know you're just throwing money out there hoping it works so uh, today we're going to review stocks that have a greater than expected uh, chance of moving in a bullish direction the reason that is is we're going to be using the smart money dark pool and block trade software algorithm uh, provided by flow trade we're looking for bullish divergence and we're looking for stocks that have got a good technical setup and these are you know these are patterns that um, anybody can use, whether you're learning stock trading, whether you're a professional stock trader, uh, whether you're just jumping in to get a Lambo, like some people have. Uh, somebody on Twitter actually bought a Lambo. Um, while that's great, you can also lose all your money. So good, solid fundamentals, technical analysis, paper trade if you don't know what you're doing, um, play the chart in front of you, and um, yeah, just, just do your best to not get caught up in the hype. So, the stocks that I have for today are Comcast, DraftKings, Marvel, and AstraZeneca. I may have time to do one extra one, which is Grow Generation. Uh, I believe that's a um, uh, cannabis-related sector stock. So, let's just jump right into it. Oh, before we do that, make sure you smash that like button subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, the chart, that you, uh, what you see in front of you is the smart money uh, dark pull block trade algorithm. Um, going from left to right and down, we've got Comcast on the left, DraftKings, Marvell, AstraZeneca. We're looking for the purple line is the normal algorithm line, whereas the white that you see is price action. Any red horizontal lines are normal block trades and the blue lines are dark pool block trades. We're looking for areas of divergence where the algorithm has crossed over or diverged from the direction of price action. It doesn't necessarily have to be across, but it's very visual when it is. Looking at Comcast, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw up these um, block trade cluster these uh, dark pool levels so that you can see how price action as well as the algorithm respects the block trade levels mainly with support and resistance these block trades can act as support and resistance uh, I'm not going to do every single one I'm just going to do uh, the, where they're clustered are I think we've got a cluster of regular block trades coming in here right and then we've got you know a cluster coming in here these can be support resistance the algorithm being the purple line is currently in a nice bullish uptrend that is visible here as you can see the algo has diverged from the price and is curled up and i'm focusing on this area here it's on the 15 minute chart so that's comcast i'm going to move over to DraftKings real quick i'm going to look back uh, let's just go back the last week well, the last seven days, yeah, let's do seven. We're gonna do the last six days for um, looking in a look back period for block trades. I don't know of any other software that has this much customization and that allows you to really get finite on these details, much less mark up your chart. So again, uh, red lines are indic indicative of regular block trade levels. So we've got one coming in at 51.70. That's going to be your resistance. 48.78 is major support. And then you've got these two right here that's right in the middle of them that is going to be kind of your midpoint support resistance. So as you can see, um, every time either price action, the algo hits an, a, a block trade level, most, most times it'll likely um, react to it. It'll be support or it'll be resistance. In this instance, it came up, it ran into resistance, came back down, found support, moved back up, resistance to support, right? Resistance, resistance. So 
quick explanation of how price action can interact with block trade levels, whether they're normal or dark pool levels. The algorithm is currently trading with price action in a very bullish structure, right? We've got a nice W-shaped recovery pattern here. We call it the Wu-Tang pattern, down, up, down, up. It's also just it's simply a Dow, Dow theory pattern, one, two, one, two, three reversal. Um, any divergences have been played out. So currently, this is just a one-to-one -one, uh, price action algorithm move. Uh, I like this because nice trend and bullish movement on the algorithm. Going down here to Marvell, uh, saying, let's look back a little bit. 14-day look-back period, 12-day look-back period. Uh, we do have a couple block trades that are obviously providing a little bit of headache for Marvell. And I'll just indicate those here like this. So those are these two red lines that you see here. Price action has... Come on, give me my yellow one. There we go. Price action and the algo, nice uptrend, right? Nice uptrend. We came up, we smacked into resistance here, we came back down, we made it support, we came back through, right? We broke through, we came back down, support, broke through. So uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get out of this little range from 47.75 to 48.35, and I believe that's going to be possible with this newly formed divergence from the last couple days. The algorithm is currently slightly curled up, and what I'd like to see it do is break above this upper block trade level and continue to drag price action with it to the upside. Okay, makes sense so far? It's, it's pretty simple, um, especially when you can see what is, what's happening, right? It, the stock market's not simple, but seeing what, what's happening with large institutional money is, makes it easier, a little bit easier anyway. Uh, AZN, which is AstraZeneca, this one's got dark pull and some regular block trade levels that I want to highlight because we've got one here at 56.50 and then we've got uh, 50, 57.15, 57.25. Like those are pretty round numbers, right? I'm lucky if I get filled at like 18 or 13, something like that. Anyway, so uh, we've got some regular block trades coming in as well that are providing uh, support resistance like we talked about earlier. And the, so those are the most recent block trades. We do have algorithm and price action divergence that is played out. All of this movement, this wide divergence is all considered played out because the algo and price action have reconvened at a point. Currently, there's net buying occurring with the price or with the algorithm. The algo has curled up at the end of the day, which is another thing that we like to see, which is an indication that there may be a, an additional pulling of this stock. Uh, looks as if the AstraZeneca real slight double bottom right here, right? Price came down, hit resistance, reverted, ran into, or excuse me, came down, hit support, reverted, ran into some resistance. Um, it's coming down and confirming this support level. So that's uh, Compass, DraftKings, Marvell, AZN. I wanted to do look at GRWG real quick. Uh, let's look at the cannabis sector stocks, Tilray, uh, CAC or CGC. I think that's what it is. And then um, Kronos, maybe? That's some pretty good ones. Tilray, price action is trading with the algorithm. Same with um, Canopy Growth. And Kronos, look at this, it's forming a nice cup and handle. Most of these are forming cups and handles, right? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, vertical on Canopy Growth, I believe they had earnings. All right, I'll check into that one. But this grow generation, I like this stock. It moves really well. I'm not really seeing any block trades or um, dark pull block trades. But essentially, price action is trading with the algorithm, right? Any sort of divergences have all been played out. But what I like about this stock is that once I one, I played it before and it moves really well. It moves pretty consistent for being such a, uh, a mid mid cap stock, I would say. It's about a $40 stock. But when it moves, it's a gappy, right? So it will gap up, fade, gap up, fade, run. Uh, looks as if though this may be a corrective pattern, but I won't know more until I get it over on the chart. Right. So let's go ahead and bring up our charts. 
my chart setups are really easy. Uh, I use moving averages and simple average or exponential and simple moving averages. The eight, uh, I'd use the eight, 21, and 34 exponential. So green, yellow, orange. Blue is the 50 SMA, and red is the 200 SMA. I need a drink. Never knew doing YouTube videos would cause me to be so thirsty. <laughs> Not like that, though. Um, all right, looking at Comcast on the daily. All right, so we got um, positive but neutral MACD. RSI and stochastics are pretty flat, as well as uh, the Bollinger Bands. Neutral volume zone oscillator. We What I like about this is that we've got a daily, two-day, three-day, four-day squeeze. Looks as if the daily is just a mid-compression, and we're about to get that slingshot effect. So if you look here, <clears throat> if you look at this area here, maybe if it lets me draw. So where the histogram went from red to yellow, so red to sloping yellow, and then we get a squeeze to fire off where the histogram turns light blue, it's a pretty explosive move, right? This move here, nice jump from what, 54 to 56, so two larger jumps is pretty good. Speaking of ATR, um, Comcast has got about a dollar ATR. Great beta, neutral view app. Looking from a, uh, a, a flow perspective, we've got stack positive moving averages. The 50 is above the 200, and the 8 on top of the 21 on top of the 34. It looks like we came up and we ran into some previous resistance here at this supply zone. So this would be the all time high supply zone that's going to run looks pretty small there might be something on a lower time frame that's causing some grief uh, let's just go ahead and mark this level this level here All right one fifty uh, whole number fifty eight dollar resistance right we came back down we tested the eight ema we closed above the eight and the twenty one so this is a nice healthy uptrending stock still we have a varying degree of uptrending support. Um, I would lean more on this 34 as as a decision making. Uh, if we get below that, it seems to respect the 50 and the 34 really well. However, when it does break above it, it quickly recovers. Um, to the downside, we've got, sorry, I'm just gonna grab some levels here. Yeah, we came down and tested previous previous support right here at this 21. We tested the 21 today, so at 56.25. Uh, looking for the demand zone. It's really small. I'm going to bring it down to a lower time frame. Uh, however, what I want to do is I want to throw some Fibonacci's on here real quick so that we can see kind of what's going on uh, from a target and you know, support perspective. So from previous high to previous low, we, we broke above the uh, 618 retracement, ran into resistance, came back down, tested the 50, as well as the 618, as well as the 34. So that means that this could be a one move in an Elliott wave. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on the extension tool. So from bottom, from low to high, back down to low is the way that I play these. We've got good symmetry in that our 50 and our 34, these are all lining up pretty well as far as uh, symmetrical, they're very symmetrical. I'm just gonna get rid of the ones that I don't need. So support at 56.28, shorter term resistance right at 56.89 right so we closed at 56.89 the 618 Fibonacci extension so the retracement of the extension the 618 is right at 56.28 which is also the 50 percent retracement from the previous high to low okay we currently closed at 56.89 as the bid as the ask 
That ask is also the 618 retracement from the high to the low, right? Fibonacci is great. So I would look for an initial run from 50, you know, 60 is going to be our target. Uh, just nice whole number would be a new all time high. Um, I'll have to look at the options chain first, but I'd like to target 60. It's 100% retracement from the previous high to low. It's also the 127 extension of the run that we're currently in. Bringing it down, see if we can get any further information. Kind of flat on the day. There's that uh, up, down. MACD crossed over a little bit. Didn't have enough juice to really get it going. We're in a daily two-day squeeze. That's just a low compression squeeze. We'd like that histogram to turn before we try to take our next move up. A dollar or something a day. This is, could possibly be a couple day swing. All right, let's look at the old options chain on this. Comcast options chain. It's a short week. I'm going to go out two weeks. Oh, this game stop. <laughs> we don't want that. CMS. I always get this wrong. CA. CMCSA. There you go. Going out to next week's. Uh, lots of open interest coming in right at these 5750s on both the call and the put side. If there was a pinning for this monthly expiration, let's. I would say the 5750s may be where they try to pin it. I like those. I'm just going to go ahead and note those. So we're looking at the 618 5750 calls. All right. It's Comcast. All right, I gotta kind of burn through these a little bit faster if I want to try to keep this video short and sweet for everyone. So looking at Marvell, same type of deal. Ran up, ran into resistance at the 618, came back down, tested the ADMA. We're currently stacked positive moving averages. Great ADX, great beta, neutral on our VWAP. Two day, three day, four day weekly squeeze. We're currently had a daily squeeze fire off that we're in right now. Look for the two day to fire and continue this move upwards for a run into earnings at the end uh, on the 7th. Uh, I believe that's Monday after market. So there may be an opportunity to take this play from, from 47 to 50. It's going to be tough. Let's see what we got here. The algo just started buying. Oh, look at that Wu-Tang reversal. Boom, boom, boom. Wu-Tang Clan. Yes, I love it. All right, so let me just get rid of, you know what? All these fields are still valid. All right, uh, let's see. Let me just clear this out real quick. Clear the old drawing set. All right, so going from previous high to previous low, which would be this high to this low. We broke through the 618, we came back and we tested it. It is now support, throwing on the old extension tool because this is now an extension move, right? Immediate target would be 5150. <laughs> There's a song about that, which is a previous high. Uh, they have earnings on the 7th. Uh, boy, let's see. What do they move? Move a dollar a day. At a dollar a day, we may hit 50. This is going to be a tough one. Um, based on earnings, that's not right. Sorry, the IV is really low uh, for having earnings at the beginning of next week. Regardless, those 50s look pretty good. The 48s have got lots of open interest. I'll move out to the monthly 49s. Um, the 49s are 50s based on, on earnings volume. So what we could do is we could get we could get the 49s 
and then make a decision at earnings what we want to do with them. Um, so that would be the 6, 18, 49 call. All right, the next one I wanted to look at really quickly was DraftKings. All right, DraftKings on the daily. All right, we have a newly born 200 SMA, which we're currently behind, um, under. This histogram is about to do the little slingshot effect. Currently, the positive MACD, RSI is increasing, stochastics is rising. Daily squeeze, uh, no daily squeeze to speak of. Maybe we have some lower time frame ones. Good beta. We have about two and a half dollars a day. It looks like we reverted to the 34. Rejected, came back down and tested the 21 for support. Maintained support. Came up and didn't quite touch the 34 again today. But we did close above the 21 with the 8 moving upwards. With that being said, I'm going to throw some fibs on this real quick from previous high to previous low. So we ran into the 50% retracement of this previous high to low. Came back down and we tested the 34. And we closed right at 50. So we closed above the 30, the 38, 3382 3, retracement. So this is now a new move to the upside. With that being said, I throw on some Fibonacci extension tools, which gives me an idea of where the stock's going to go. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just get rid of the ones I don't necessarily need right at this point. Um, I don't think... Uh, yeah. So it's interesting to see that the 618 ex uh, re extender, excuse me, 618 retracement from the high to low is right at the 200 SMA. That's just magically uh, an automatic target for me. Whenever I see, whenever I see things line up, it's just going to be a target. So 53.83 is the target. Uh, minor overhead resistance coming in at 50. 5188. Uh, earnings has already passed. I'll look at a couple more things here, real quick. Nice run up, ran into resistance. We just sat there and based at that high. All right, we hit the 34 EMA. We did have a squeeze fire off. Nope. So, 34 EMA on the daily. We ran into that. We ran into the, the 200 SMA, the rising. 200 SMA, is that correct? Yep, the rising 200. I don't know why I don't have this on my 4-hour chart, but that's what it needs to be on. Yeah, so from a 4-hour perspective, right, nice little looping, it's like, kind of like a bird, but uh, nice recovery. We came back down, uh, tested our moving averages as support. Like I said, minor resistance of 51, let's call it 50. 51.85, a break of that, and we're moving back up to 57, right? That's a longer term target. So let's just look at the June 18th 57s for DraftKings. Whoa, 55s are good. What am I missing here? It's just been beat down, right? We're gonna have resistance at 52, 54. Yeah, this level here, 54 is going to be a pretty significant resistance for us. But I think we can get there. So I like these, you know, I just like, I like the 53s. So two weeks out, arrow 6, 18, 53s for DraftKings. Oh, that's why I gotta get through that giant purple cloud. It's gonna be tough, but if we can get through it. It should be fun. Um, contrarian, we can always play, and then move back down to forty-eight. Right, we can play that move back down to forty-eight. So fifty-three call, forty-eight put. All right, and then the last one is AstraZeneca, AZN, yield. Biotech play. All right, what'd they do? Oh, what? <laughs> Maybe not. What happened there? 
That's a nasty dollar candle. What happened? Is there news? What am I missing? Something happened. Zero COVID deaths recorded for the first time since the pandemic. Oh, uh, what are they sold off? They're going to run out of business. All right. Good news for us, bad news for them. Uh, let's see, what can we do here? If that's the case, so what do we do? We ran into resistance. Uh, <clears throat> all right, looking at this, I mean, it looks good though. We've got stack positive moving averages, neutral view app. Eh, buy a, eh. You know what? I'm going to pass on AstraZeneca. That's it. Uh, I'm going to call it then. Thanks for joining me. My name was Dark Pool Alga. Oh, grow generation. All right. Let's just look real quick. GRWG. I like this setup here. Uh, why do I like it? Because we had a mid compression squeeze just fire off, right? We've got, we're currently nice uptrend 200 SMA support coming in right recent bounce off of that I gotta figure out why why on these smaller time frames I'm not getting the greatest zooming in yeah that's just gonna have to do it all right so we've got uh, positive MACD positive stochastics Mm, our size is increasing. We've got a uh, light blue histogram, daily, two day, three day squeeze. Uh, when those fire, when that releases, expect a larger than expected move upwards. We came off the 200 EMA or 200 SMA, tested the 50, rejected, came back down, found support at the 34 EMA. Right, that's this level here. So, what FIB is going to tell us to do is we're going to go from I'm gonna go from let's go from this high a little shorter term time frame so yeah from the high to the low we came up we hit resistance at the 50 SMA we came back down and we based at the 60 618 retracement from the previous high to low um, using that as a base we've got a $51 target for that ex for that retracement um, however I'm gonna look at this extension so from low to the high to the low. We don't have a whole lot of symmetry coming in on the extension. And so 48, 33 is the target. That's a nice $5 move. Considering we only move $3.5 a day, I think that we can get there. Kind of like everything, uh, sold off, recovered, flat at the end of the day. All right, big pop drop. There it is. Yeah, that 48.33 is the 200 SMA on the four hour. We have a four hour squeeze that just fired off. So you can see here, positive MACD increasing volume. This squeeze that fired off is going to be firing for four or six to eight periods, six to eight four hour periods. We're in five. So stack positive moving averages. When this daily squeeze goes to fire off, it may continue to propel us upwards. However, that 200 SMA is going to we're going to we're going to smack into it right there at 48, 47.50. Let's see if there's an options for that level option. Yeah, 47.50. What do you know? Right there, well within risk tolerance. Two weeks out. I, however, like these 45s a little bit better. You could also do a vertical. Right, you could do the 4247 vertical. That's a five dollar vertical for about uh, two bucks, maybe. Right, that'll get you in it for. Um, that'll if you, if you can, yeah, that'll get you in for uh, less than it would cost to buy the 42s outright. But I do like these 45s. We've got some pretty decent open interest. So that's the June 18th. We're going to go over 6, 18, 45. I like those ones. All right. 
now it's over. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. My name is Darkwell Algo. I do this every day. Join me every morning, Monday through Friday, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, as I do a live stream for the Dailies Watch List. I take requests on Twitter. Hit me up. And if you have not got your free trial of Flowtrade yet, there's a link in the description. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe. Turn on notifications and share it with your friend. Z friends. <laughs> like you have, more. you have more than one friend. Sorry. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. All of us content creators can use all the help that we can. Um, so share, share it out there and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me.